um, what are our ethical obligations to the poor? Um, I would like to address this issue from another point of view. Let us see it from the point of view of the subject, not from the point of what is objectively good and necessary, but from the point of view of the subject. The obligation Rocco, we feel. Rocco. The obligations we feel towards the poor are strictly dependent upon the structure of our heart. And this structure, in its turn, largely dependent upon the society we live in, on the material constraints of our everyday life, and mainly on the kind of family we were born in, and on the relations we entertained with our parents and siblings. In those relations we were born, and in those relations, our self-consciousness was shaped. In his message, Pope Francis has made a clear reference to the concept of structural sin. The structural sin is the result of the material conditions in which we toil to make a living and of the family structures in which we form our personality. I wish now to attract your attention on one point that seems to me to be critical. It seems to me that the expansion of the indifference to the conditions of the poor is connected with the growth in our society of a narcissistic personality model. The narcissist is a man who, when he says I, really means only himself. He cares first and foremost, nay, exclusively for himself. He does not love anybody and is not loved by anybody. A model can be found in an American author quoted in our booklet, who has dramatically affected the social mind of the United States in the 20th century, Ayn Rand. We better understand this kind of a mentality if we confront it with its opposite. I shall call it the communion personality. A communion personality is a person who, when he says I, he really thinks we. He cannot think of his individual good or of his individual happiness without including in it also the good of others with varying degrees of intensity, whether for children, relations, neighbors, fellow countrymen, humanity at large. We find that the manifest of this kind of personality in the words of Jesus to his disciples in the 15th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. He says, I am divine, and you are the grapes, and we all are one. Immanuel Kant has given us a licensed version of those words in his categorical imperative. Behave always in such a way that the principle of our action may be adopted as a maxim of universal legislation. Well, he is a German, and so it's not so easy to understand as Jesus, but the meaning is clear after a bit of a reflection. This is the philosophical background also of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, quoted by Jeffrey in the beginning. The men of the Middle Ages, who albeit disposed of very limited material resources, nevertheless thought he had a duty of sharing them with the poor, and of these men we read in the booklet, had a communion personality. Sigmund Freud, who was in depth a son of Abraham, his atheism notwithstanding, taught us that personality and self-consciousness are shaped in the family. And empirical research confirms uh, that uh, um, the greatest poverty for children is not to have a family. Perhaps you should speak more about the strengthening of the family as a fundamental weapon in the struggle against poverty. And I wonder whether the struggle to reduce poverty in the world should be more strictly connected with a cultural and educational struggle to redirect the mainstream of our culture from a narcissistic to a communion personality model. And let me conclude with a line from an old Brazilian song that I have sung when I was a young man. Como posso ser feliz se o povo é meu irmão? How can I be happy? if the poor man is my brother. Mm. Thank you. <laughs>